This is Twit. I printed something for a project I did for the screensavers not too long ago. Uh, this little guy. This is a Raspberry Pi inside of a Nintendo, like a basically the NES classic case. Yeah, it looks, it has like the little grills here on the side, just like the mm -hmm. NES. And this would be where you would put your old school cartridge, and then this would be where you plug in your controllers. Yeah. So it's made to mimic the look. So right as I was going to print the rest of the pieces of this, I ran out of the the filament. But inside the Raspberry Pi just hangs out and. If you ever wanted to build a NES Classic using a Raspberry Pi, well, I uh, made a video showing you how to do it. Why spend an exorbitant amount of money to buy an NES Classic when you can build your own? The Raspberry Pi 3 is a great retro machine capable of playing games from systems as old as the NES all the way to the N64. As far as hardware for this project, Obviously, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. I recommend the version 3 with its 1.2 GHz quad-core processor and 1 GB of memory, which makes the Pi finally capable of not just playing 2D side-scrolling games, but now has enough horsepower to play games from the first PlayStation and N64 era. Next, you'll need a micro SD card with at least 8 GB or higher, a USB drive, and a power supply capable of 5 volts with 2.5 amps. Anything less and the Pi won't have enough juice to play demanding games. You'll also need a controller. USB replicas of the SNES controllers go for about $14 for a pair on Amazon. For software, make your way to the RetroPie website at retropie.org.uk. There you'll find an image of the RetroPie needed for this project. Once downloaded, extract the file, and if you're a Windows user like me, download the Win32 Disk Imager to install the image to your micro SD card. Mac users can download Apple Pie Baker, and if you're an ultra elite Linux user, well, I don't need to explain any of this to you. Once the image is finished writing, place the micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi. Hook up all necessary cables and boot up for the first time. You'll be greeted by a welcome screen for setting up your controller. Follow the mapping instructions and once finished, you'll be at the RetroPie options menu. Now it's time to transfer ROMs to a USB drive. ROMs are digital versions of game cartridges and are copyrighted so they are not included with the Raspberry Pi. But fortunately, I found some laying around in an old folder of mine. Format the USB drive and create a folder called RetroPie. Then plug it into the Pi and wait for it to stop blinking. Remove the drive and place it back into the computer. You'll now see folders and a ROM folder that has a subfolder for each emulator included. Move ROMs you have in their respective folders and plug the USB back into the Pi. Once again, wait for it to stop blinking and restart Emulation Station for it to recognize the freshly downloaded ROMs. You should now see emulators pop up with the games listed. To make the menu system a little more slick, we'll need the collective help of the internet. Go to the RetroPie options menu and select Wi-Fi. Enter your password and connect to your network. Then back out to the main menu and select Scraper. From there, you'll be able to fetch game descriptions and cover art. Now it's time to sit back and play some of your favorite games from the last 30 years on the big screen. PlayStation games like Final Fantasy VII and N64 games like Mario Kart run flawlessly. GoldenEye has some stuttering, but that could be fixed with some overclocking. If you want to go wireless, you can use a Bluetooth controller. In my case, the new Nintendo Switch Pro controller syncs easily to the Pi 3. The only thing left to do now is to find a case. This has been Brian Burnett from Know How, showing you how to build your own Raspberry Pi retro game machine. Yeah, so that was the project for basically like why get an NES Classic, which we talked about in Amiibos and how crazy expensive those are to yep. find. Same deal with the NES Classic. Yeah. Um, and this will play PlayStation N64. Um, and if you did make the investment in getting a Switch Pro controller, which is, I think I paid 70 I think it's down to $64 now. Okay. Um, because it's Bluetooth, you can connect it to the Raspberry Pi, or even your PC, you could do that. So. Yeah, and it's a super great, comfortable controller. It is. Love the joysticks, the button placement. It's really, really nice. One of the big reasons why I didn't buy the Nintendo Classic uh -huh. is it just could play the games it had on it. Just right. the games it had and the controllers were connected and the wires yeah. were like three feet right. long, I think. And it's like, <laughs> I, you know, once I go down that rabbit hole, there's a lot more games I want to play. And 
what makes this so ingenious and so great, and, and I love that it's so easy to do, is you can play NES games, you can play Super Nintendo games, you can go 64, you can go with Sega consoles, mm -hmm. get your Dreamcast on, whatever makes you happy. Like, I love it. 